All right, we're recording. So welcome everyone to the Friday session of uh, the Change 2011 course. I'm a stick in the mud. I still say my dates with 2000 in them. Uh, George is here and Tim Owens is here and we're in a Google Hangout. And since we're in a Google Hangout, people will be able to join us. So if you're listening, uh, on the uh, web page that we've sent you to, you will be able to join us. We'll give you instructions on that. Uh, you can also join in the IRC chat that you see below the video. And uh, I see George's smiling face on the video because uh, uh, I have it frozen so I don't hear all the sound twice. Uh, I can probably make that live. You can just right mute here. the sound actually. Go. Yeah, mute the sound on the screen. Well, that, that, that would be better, wouldn't it? And then well, uh, it's your call. You can do it however you want. Well, this way you can, your own way, Stephen. I, li I like to be able to see what's happening on the same screen where it's happening. Makes and, sense. And Dave somebody, is saying hi because heaven forbid that we ignore Dave for more than just a minute before he starts getting upset. Dave, welcome. Hi. Yeah. Nice of you to join the course there, Dave. Oh, man. <laughs> Let me tell you. So tell us about your week. Apparently, you're having meetings and uh, changing the world, Dave. Well, I'm um, I'm running a little open course here at the university, and one of the things that I've been trying to do while we've been doing the big stuff is trying to figure out one how I can take an open course and put it inside of my university, and then two <laughs> how I can make it for something other than the sort of technology stuff we've been doing. So what I'm starting next Wednesday is an open course trying to introduce a five-week open course introducing high school students, mature students, whatever, a first-time entrance to university, to the university experience. So this is a sort of off the side of my desk project I've got going on here at the university. And on uh, Monday, uh, Sunday night, I tweeted out sort of a draft of the letter I was going to send out. And the Minister of Education tweeted me back and went, wow, that's a really good idea. Do you want to meet for breakfast? And I went, uh pilot project um uh so i said sure as you do good answer yeah of course so we sat down and he loves the idea so they've sent out um, an announcement to all the school districts on the island and <laughs> all the counselors and to yeah so it went from my little pilot project that i just want to kind of to suddenly being something i had to glam onto in a hurry so it's uh you know what yeah. dave you are you are becoming the jeff jarvis of educational technology oh. in your capacity to get yourself known for your work in this case Thanks. it's a compliment wow. so, yeah. jeff jarvis that's not a compliment yeah you, you have to clarify <laughs> yourself not, on that one especially no, not it's, from you Steven. It's, it's not a compliment i'm just being a dickhead dave and i've had ongoing <laughs> arguments on twitter that's run i don't know what it is every time dave tweets something i have an urge to respond <laughs> But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's get on to the topic of the course, if you guys don't mind. And first of all, I just want to say a quick shout out. Thanks to those uh, lovely folks at uh, DTLT for uh, hosting this session. We're just kind of playing around with different technologies and getting uh, an opportunity to experiment in different areas. Uh, there's some neat stuff that these guys are doing at uh, DTLT. Today, we're unfortunately missing uh, the cuddle couch and uh, our good friend Jim Groom. But uh, thanks, Tim, for for uh, still agreeing to host us. And it's, I guess, an opportunity for us to, you know, sort of bring these two separate activities together a little bit and just sort of see what happens. So that's a quick shout out and a thanks. Uh, our course this week, which we can talk about a little bit and then move in any direction you guys want. Uh, we're looking at uh, some of the work of David Wiley in open education. And it's interesting, I just had uh, breakfast with, uh, with Wayne McIntosh, who's at Athabasca right now, about his uh, OERU initiative and uh, the Wiki University and other stuff that he's involved in. So, um, is he like taking going on here? And, and uh, yeah, so that's it. So, Dave, you've got a presentation in 20 minutes. Why don't we throw it over to you? Have you had a chance to look at some of uh, David Wiley's stuff or look at the recording or his readings this week? I, I read through some of the readings. I haven't had a chance to get to the recording yet, but I, I'm constantly impressed by the scope. And David sort of epitomizes that that Nietzschean philosophy of believing what you believe today, today, and then changing it out tomorrow, which I heartily respect <laughs> about his approach. Um, That's bit. funny. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's, it's interesting to look at a person's career, and the way that he's positioned his week is very different, I think, than other people have. 
and I really appreciate it because it, it provides a lot of context. You know, when you start back yeah. from 1988 and where he started and the stuff that he's done, you know, he's been digging in on this stuff for a long time. He forgot yeah. to put his mute on. Uh, Tim, uh, could you either mute or not no, to think mine? Sorry, it, That's all good. I was muted on the actual Wirecast audio, so we're, we're okay for the people oh, okay. watching. Cool, sorry. Um, so I, I thought that that was, that was really compelling. I thought it, uh, I've never seen David actually take such a pro-David position in public before. Normally, hmm. Part of the reason is, you know, we did ask him to, right? Yeah. We asked no, 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 I, I think it's great. I have no criticism. I found that a really helpful context because I got yeah. to know David in person in 2009 and then walk back to the stuff that he did. So there's yeah. a presumption, I think, that we forget that for new people coming in that don't know that he's been doing this, that he's worked yeah. on a lot of foundational stuff. I think this is really helpful context for a lot of people. And I think that's the thing that, that I found the most useful because I'm familiar with a lot of his work, but I wasn't familiar. I had never gotten that whole picture before. And it was nice to see, too. I mean, you know, he, he's... And everyone has multiple careers in their lives these days. I mean, let's face it, it's not like you just sort of do one thing, but you know, it's exactly like you said, Dave. He's been uh, fairly active in some foundational uh, stuff, everything from the learning objects uh, activity mm -hmm. initially. Well, not initially, because I think he just started with some openness resources and he went into uh, activity around uh, learning objects. And then he's uh, since sort of transitioned to a few different areas, but he still kept that openness stream going. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's going to turn into a mini entrepreneur very quickly with his uh, different activities that he's involved in. Just not so many, I think. And uh, not, not, uh, not soon. He's already started. <laughs> All right. And I probably have less problem with that than Stephen does. Um, I think that uh, one of the, the other things that I've always really appreciated about David's work is that he is, sets himself as one model of approach. He doesn't necessarily say that there aren't others, but rather argues strongly for the way that he does it and is very transparent about the stuff that he does. As he's moved into the stuff that he's doing now, there's no secrets about it. There's no, oh, uh, it's this is what I think I should be doing now. This is why I think I should be doing it. This is why I think it's important. And I really appreciate that. And you see that all the way through the stuff this week. And really, that's what I've seen from David since I met him. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, from your end, Stephen, I mean, out of any of us here, you've had the most consistent uh, interaction with yeah. David. Um, what's your take on his uh, sort of what he looked at this week and a quick scope of the, the activity really that he has been involved in since the late 90s? Yeah, it was really nice to be able to talk with David. And uh, I haven't actually talked with him face to face since our session in Vancouver. So uh, uh, that was pretty good. Uh, we do go way back. My uh, first introduction to David was him coming onto some list and, and saying that his uh, resource on learning objects had finally taken over the number one spot on Google. <laughs> and I fired back on the list and thanks, David. The resource that was number one on Google before yours was mine. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, of course, was the uh, learning objects paper that I had written. And that sort of set us off. And, and we've always had this sort of relationship through time where we're working very much on the same sort of thing, covering the same sort of topics, often having the same point of view, mm. uh, but we're subtly different. And in those differences, we get some, uh, some interesting sorts of arguments. And I think as well, uh, what's most interesting to me is our outlook on life is very different. Uh, our, our outlook, and, and not just the religion thing, although David, has, as he said in our talk on Wednesday, David is religious. I'm not, and I, I found it interesting uh, that his religion brings himself to pretty much the same sort of moral point of view that my non-religion does. Uh, so, And that's a discussion I want to have with him one day. But I think you might like, as well just convert then, Stephen, because then you get the benefits of church affiliation right away. Well, and, and David benefits from affiliations in ways that I don't, and, yeah. and I find this very interesting. And he, uh, I'm just trying to, trying to say this accurately, not necessarily nicely, but accurately, 
for example, David is more sanguine about uh, corporations than I am. Um, everyone he, I should say that I was going to say everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, he he doesn't see where I would see uh, an agenda behind the uh, funding foundations. Yeah. Uh, and and it's not simply that he doesn't see it where I would see it. He is not inclined to look to see if there is an agenda in places where, for me, it's like second nature. While well, they're doing something, okay, why are they doing this? Uh, you know, the, so it's it, it's funny. So my analysis of things is very different from his. Yeah. We end up in pretty much the same place, but we approach it, we we reach it from very different routes. And so it's very interesting when David says something like, as he did on Wednesday, uh, you know, I'm doing this for the morally right reasons. I, I'm sort of scratching my head because, you know, I think I'm doing things for the morally right reasons, but boy, they're, they're two very different moralities at work here. Yeah. So, and... You know, as, as I like to tell people, uh, my politics, my morality, these are derived from my science. And, and this is, you know, almost the exact opposite place from where David derives his. And I do think in the long run that there, there would be different outcomes. David with his company... If David with his company ended up as one of the 1%, that would be perfectly fine with him. Uh, but I would have a lot of trouble with it. So. Well, uh, yeah, because if you, I mean, David may disagree about being fine with hitting the 1% uh, end of things. Uh, I don't know if that's quite his target, but I, again, you know, yeah. he has a lot on the go. So do you mind then if we take a slight shift? Because one of the things we haven't done, and Dave's got to go in about five, ten minutes. Yep. So do you mind if we just do a very rapid run through? We've, we're now into uh, our fourth week. Is that where we're at? Fifth week. Because we did the week. opening week. But fourth presentation week. Fourth presentation so, week. Uh, do you mind doing just a quick, you know, Dave, you first, because you got to go. But what's hit you if you look at each of the speakers that we've had in the facilitated session so far? I'll tell you what's hit me the most is how nice it is that we're not doing all the presenting. I'm really enjoying the course a lot more than I've enjoyed the other ones because I'm getting really interesting cross sections of how people think they should be doing this. Mm -hmm. um, some of my quick takeaways, one, and I've started telling this to everybody, is that we're way better off to do recordings of these things rather than actually people doing presentations. So from a technical perspective, I don't know why we haven't been doing more recordings before, but there's so much the way to go. It's so much more complicated. There's no sense for us all to get together just to have somebody do a presentation like but there's a yeah. sense of there is a sense of, of there though like there's a sense of we're all here now and i think that's we can't overlook that because our illuminate session this weekend went went very well i thought i, think, I, I agree entirely but if we're going to do an hour-long session and somebody's going to present for 55 minutes i don't know that i mean the chat room is good and stuff it's just for all the technical challenges that we end up doing we had very 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 nice people working with us during yeah. the difficulties that we had. Like, yeah, no, you're all of those right. people were super nice. Oh yeah. Um, like Martin and, and was the, the one that I facilitated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one that I, when, when I facilitated with Martin, I talked for 20 minutes, just going like this, trying to keep the conversation going until we got it uploaded and we got that stuff ready. And Martin did a wonderful presentation, but we had like four questions on the end. Yeah. You know, so all those people came to listen to me talk for 20 minutes, a nice presentation from Martin. And then then there's great there's good conversation in the chat room. And I think that's valuable. But, you know, those recordings are really nice, too. I agree. But there, there is a, I think it's worth emphasizing. There is a sense of placeness that comes together when we sort of, you know, interact, even, you know, even here. I mean, yes, it'll be a recording later, but you know, this isn't the best example, but, you know, with Illuminate, the back channel stuff can actually be extremely valuable. And I look at the, That's you true. know, when David did his session on Wednesday, he didn't present, right? He just sort of right. said, hey, let's talk. And there was a lot of chat for people who ended up saving the, the chat, and I think it was quite valuable in that regard. Yeah, and I think that's that's my point. I, you guys made that transition already. Talked to David. David went, yeah, sure, I'll just come out and chat. I think those are wonderf wonderfully valuable. 
I yeah. think I really liked Martin's presentation. I think it was really good that we had him do that 40, 42 minutes, whatever it is. But we could have just as easily done, had it work out like it did with Allison, where she did her presentation and then there was chance for discussion otherwise, you know? Yeah, yeah. So anything in particular that hit you from the speakers? I mean, we, we had uh, week one, we had uh, Zoraini talking about uh, mobile technology in Malaysia. We had, uh, um, you know, followed that up with uh, Martin chatting about digital scholarship. And then last week we had Alison Littlejohn looking at uh, collective connective learning. This week we've got David Wiley. I mean, let's face it, we've had four really stellar weeks and topics. You know, and next week we have Tony Bates. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You Which know, we should we need to send this out early, Stephen. Is that his, his live session is actually on Sunday? Sunday. Oh, geez, that's right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to send out a special issue of the newsletter then. I yeah. don't know when uh, when Bonnie's coming back from Toronto, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to host either. I'm still waiting to find out. Yeah. How's she um, doing? Have you a uh, good session there? I haven't heard yet. I'm still waiting for uh, yeah. the internet to tell me. the The one thing that the thing that stands out in my head as I'm thinking about it that surprised me the most of all the sessions was how little criticism there was of Martin's position. Now, granted, the people, they self-select and the people who would come yeah. course like this, there's some of that in there, but I never heard a single person say, what's he talking about? When, when you look at the, the, the reaction to George's discussion about MOOCs on the Chronicle at the same time, yeah. <laughs> it was very it was positive. just completely the opposite. And I wonder where these two divides are. And how it was interesting at the same conversation. Well, we had uh, Dave, or we had Martin uh, presenting at uh, Ed Media in Lisbon, and he presented on the the, the argument. It was an Oxford style debate. The argument was that in five years' time, you know, digital media, digital scholarship will have the same status as traditional scholarship does, and uh, it was shot down. Like seventy percent of the participants said, "No, that's not going to happen." And so there was a lot more pushback. So you're right. We have a, some somewhat of a smaller selected group here that's more yeah. to digital scholarship. Well, I can I can sort of see both points because I look at my own work, which is mostly digital scholarship, and it carries some weight for sure. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, otherwise I wouldn't get invited to speak in places. But at the same time, uh, there is a, a very clear sense, and people do make it clear to me that, you know, uh, what I'm doing isn't really the same as scholarship, because, uh, you know, the, the publications aren't there, the letters after my name aren't there, it's, it's not the same. So, uh, in a sense, both the proponents and the critics are correct. Well, but but think of this for a minute, though. I mean, there there is a sort of a lag in the system realizing it. We had a we had just recently had an election in Alberta, uh, mm. where well, it was a party election, which actually is a provincial election, as you know, Steve. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so the person that elected, uh, she and she's about as progressive as I think any premier that we've ever had. Uh, she ended up saying that the politics, or the society of Alberta, has moved on, but the political structure is just yeah. now catching up. And so I think in a similar sense, you, know, you look at the work that you're doing, you know, you do a quick Google Scholar search, I, I haven't compared you, but I'm pretty sure you rank very high, comparable with any academic in, in the field. And obviously, you've done a lot of publishing, you have a lot of influence, you present at a lot of conferences, uh, what's missing? You know, like, what more do you need from yeah. the ed tech community to sort of validate that what you're doing is exactly the right sort of thing? Well, uh, let me tell you very simply, right? If the NRC is dissolved and a report came out yesterday recommending that it is, I'll need to find a job. I will not get, I will not get a job as an academic anywhere. That's what's missing. And that's pretty significant. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, I would think you'd be able to find uh, something in an academic sense, but, you know, I'm sure you're right. I mean, the system does need to preserve itself, or at least it thinks yeah. it needs to preserve itself. It wants to. It wants to, for sure. Yeah. Whether it needs to is a completely different conversation. <laughs> yeah. True. It, it sees a need from its own internal perspective. <laughs> All right. Thanks, well, guys. Sorry I have to go again. I promise right. I'll be better. Yeah. Later, Dave. Bye, guys. Bye, Dave. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> 
All right. Well, I mean, we don't need to go a full hour here, Stephen, but do you have any sort of thoughts on, uh, you know, either yeah. Zerani or Martin's or, or Al- I mean, Allison's presentation got an, yeah. or her week got an awful lot of uh, blog posts and interaction this past week. What, what was interesting to me about Allison's was the degree of similarity between what she's talking about and what we're talking about. She's using almost like 100% completely different terminology. But the concepts underneath or behind what she's talking about really are the same sorts of things. Yeah. Well, isn't that often what happens? I mean, you know, when, mm-hmm. when certain things are going, they hit a certain level of interest. And I think mm-hmm. we were there, obviously, when you did your Learning 2.0 article. Um, it was yeah. one of those things where there's a lot of things happening, and people know the changes there, but they don't quite have that one name or whatever well, that exactly, gives it, yeah. attractions that allows for easier discourse. Yeah. Um, and nowadays it's, you know, I was thinking this just recently, it used to be, you know, I could speak with a group of colleagues and I would say, oh, you know, this just happened. And, but everybody knows these days, it used to be because yes. they weren't reading blogs or these tech news sites via RSS, which means that there was sort of, you know, you had a sense of what was going on and, and some people in the, that you interacted with may not. But these days, you know, it seems like people have come a long way with building their own infrastructure for personal learning networks, whatever you want to call it, for making mm-hmm. sense of what's going on. Even though they're using different language. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting because the, the fact that they're using different language means that they've come up with these concepts, the same concepts, independently. Right. And I think that's a lot more common than people will give credit for. And I think it really raises questions about how we should be, you know, evaluating the, the uh, or, or attributing the discovery of concepts or the formation of ideas. A lot of these things are just out there in the ether and are almost inevitably going to be discovered by someone sooner or later. Yeah. Well, and that's, there's an interesting point. I'm not sure how familiar you are with uh, I think Stuart Kaufman's work. I've talked about adjacent possibilities before, but, you know, he's in the field of biology. And I think to a degree, what ends up happening, there's, you progress at a certain pace. And this is why, you know, whether it's uh, you're looking at Newton and others simultaneously coming to similar realization or with mm-hmm. Einstein, the race to, to sort of define uh, his theory of relativity and, and those kinds of activities, you end up where, where once things have progressed to a certain stage, people who are connected will similarly start to hit similar realization. Now, right. when Kaufman talks about it as adjacent possibilities, he looks at it as, an, as a landscape develops, and all of a sudden there are simultaneously new possibilities available based on how this landscape has advanced to a certain level. I think the same holds true where we're at with ed tech and some of these things is, yeah. you know, you've been uh, writing online uh, with your newsletters and activities. Uh, others, uh, you know, have been taken, let's say, Grania Canole has taken it from a more traditional institutional sense, people like Martin Weller as well. But all of a sudden, you know, you kind of converge and you develop similar terms and concepts because that's mm-hmm. just how things happen when a field advances. Uh, and. One of the questions I wanted to ask David Wiley, and I didn't get a chance, which is too bad, and he's not here now, so I can't do it. During his talk, he talked about, uh, you know, he was doing this and he was doing that, and then uh, who was it he was working with? Uh, Tim, we're hearing your typing. Um, That's okay. who was it? Uh, was it Eric Raymond? I don't know. But it was someone like that. He says, you know, uh, I was developing these ideas and I was talking with Eric Raymond or whoever it was. It's in the recording. And my first thought was, how is it you're talking with Eric Raymond? Like, what happens that you were talking with Eric Raymond? Where does this come from? Because I don't talk to Eric Raymond or, or you know, and, and most people don't. And there, there is this element here. And, and it's part of connectivism, but it's part of not connectivism where, uh, you know, so-and-so talks to so-and-so, talks to so-and-so, and they, they create this cluster, which is the cluster around which these ideas take form. There was this uh, debate thing, not not the big debate that David and I had uh, in Vancouver, but an online debate thing. 
where we presented our, our perspectives on different licensing. And what I contributed to that, and it wasn't really remarked on at the time, uh, which I, I found disappointing, but what I contributed was an alternative history of open content and open source software. Because there's the history that everyone knows, right? There's GPL, there's, uh, what's his name, Richard Stallman, uh, you know, and there's, there's Linux and, and, and you know, the, the usual thing. And then, of course, uh, Creative Commons flowing up from that. And that's the, uh, the, the, the Harvard, Berkeley, MIT, Stanford nexus, oh. right? And, and that's the crowd that David talks to. That's how he talks to Eric Raymond, right? And that's the crowd so that when somebody in that group comes up with one of these massively parallel inventions, uh, you know, the, uh, I forgot the phrase you used, the uh, adjacent possibility development, right. right? They're the ones who get the credit because they talk to each other, right? But it's not but simply is, about the credit, it's they get to define it. See, and that's, I mean, that's very, there's a few things at play there that, and I, I don't want this to come across sort of as a, you know, a negative uh, national kind of an issue, but I have found, and, and you're right, I mean, David interacts with a group of folks that a lot of people perhaps don't interact with. Now, he's been early yeah. out in the U.S., which is in some regards the financial epicenter of the funding around these things, and, yeah. and I remember, I can't remember where Dave and I, uh, Dave Cormier and I were, and we're chatting with, with, uh, with David, and he said, oh yeah, I was a meeting last week, and then someone mentioned reciprocal teaching, mm -hmm. and then Bill Gates was at the meeting. <laughs> and so there was a group of about four or five of them. It was a small meeting. So they were, you know, the meeting. And then Bill Gates said, what's that? One over teaching, you know, reciprocal teaching. Anyway, yeah. um, so yeah. David found that very amusing. And Bill Gates had a sense of humor. I haven't met Bill Gates. Um, so there's a certain sense in which you're right. Other people are connected in a certain way. And yeah. we find this now with the artificial intelligence course. I can guarantee you we're going mm -hmm. to see an awful lot of popular press around uh, this, this world's first open online course, yeah. artificial yeah, exactly. intelligence done by Stanford. But I have also found, and uh, I don't mean this in a negative way, I mean this in it's a reality way, that if you are from the U.S., which has uh, an enormous influence internationally, um, you're going to uh, – the local newspapers, local university uh, councils, and those kinds of things will draw from people in their own country to present on these topics and ideas. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, the external experts in some cases, some of the leaders may be sitting in the U.K. or maybe sitting in, in uh, mm -hmm. Belgium. But you're going to, because of your own media ecosystem, you're going to promote the voices that are part of your system. And that's why yeah. – somebody comes along and uh, writes uh, a new book on learning. I mean, there's the one that, uh, I think it was a Kathy Davidson has written recently. You know, these communities reinforce each other's reputation and they need to because if right. they stop giving each other credit, then they're not going to get credit. And you end up, <laughs> anyway. So cynical people. Yeah. But there is an element of the rich get richer phenomenon happening here, though, isn't there? Uh, you know, yeah. there's a mutually reinforcing sort of thing. And that, when I see a, anything that's a rich get richer phenomenon, my analysis is that that system is broken. Uh, and again, this is my morality, my politics coming from my science, right? If you have something like that in nature, it's going to die. Uh, you know, in, any any of these runaway reactions, these cascade phenomena, uh, you know, they are examples of broken systems. The classic example is the ep epidemic running wild through society, right? Uh, well, that's never a good thing. <laughs> Well, you know, the other thing to look at is the growth of human population is definitely the human species has become an yeah. entity that is, uh, you know, has disproportionately represented uh, itself in the in the biosphere. But, mm -hmm. you know, you can't start eliminating humans simply to revert things. So. No, um, I'm, and I'm not suggesting that we eliminate David Wiley either. I mean, that, let's but... keep him. He's a good <laughs> Let, guy. Let's keep him. <laughs> My David Wiley, I think I'll keep him. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, 
Well, again, like I said, we don't have to run the full hour here, but is there anything else, Stephen, that sort of struck you over the last four weeks or any lessons that, you've, uh, that you're thinking of going forward that we need to make sure we address? Uh, okay. A uh, couple of things. One thing is I'm running behind on the recordings page, so people should know that. Uh, but there are recordings from the talks. They're all scattered in different places, which is what which is what has made it a bit difficult. But I'm yeah. aware of that. I'm trying to rebuild the recordings page so that it'll be a good recordings page and not a non non existent one the way it is now. So there is that. Uh, what else? Uh, there's the uh, Tony Bates thing on Eliminate Sunday, but we know about that. So there will be a special issue of the newsletter because I forgot to put it in today's newsletter. Um, yeah, I've been on the road the last week, and I'll be on the road again next week. So <laughs> Okay, where are you heading next week? I'm first flying to Barcelona, and then uh, a few days later going to Belgium, and then a few days later going to Providence, Rhode Island, and then New York. Wow, so you, you've got one of those uh, multi-stops that you seem to do once or twice a year. Yeah, multi-stop. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great trip. And I'm going to talk to lots of people, and I'm going to be doing some talks myself. And that's always useful because it means that, uh, you know, I, I get to have another crack at uh, reshaping what I think and getting it right this time. So, yeah. uh, but it's, it's going to be hard to do things like coding for the course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, um, one point that I've seen here, you know, we, we don't have a particularly central aspect to this course. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, Tony Bates is this weekend. I'm just reading the text area. Is this weekend at uh, on Sunday? I can't remember the exact time, but as Stephen mentioned, it'll get sent out via the daily, so you'll be aware of that session. Yeah. Um, anyway, th this course, what I've found so far is, and maybe it's because we had these difficulties right at the start uh, with audio, and and it just it felt more disoriented than I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we lost a few participants in the course as a result of those early headaches. And I had a discussion, I can't remember, it was on a blog post where somebody had said, you know, these, these, there's too many tools, too many technologies being used. We kind of need to make, you know, make it a little bit easier for newcomers. And I think it's a great point. Yeah. Um, but it's a twofold thing. Like on the one hand, we do need new tools uh, that are easier and simpler to use. But on the flip side, we're also talking about, I think one of the critical skills that educators and students need to have down the road is the ability to navigate these multifaceted, complex, multi-tool, multi-space environments. Yeah. You know, th this notion of you're going to get a package course, a central space to go read stuff on this space now you've learned, um, I, don't think, I don't think that makes sense anymore. And that's so there's the question. On the one hand, we're saying, you know what, the model that we have, actually, you might find it's chaotic, but it's how you're going to be learning down the road, because that's yeah. the way the internet functions. So, you know, we need to develop skills for navigating this fragmented space and yeah. multi, uh, multiple tool sets. So that's the one end. But on the flip side, you can't say that and just outright say, well, you know, look, damn it. Uh, develop the skills. There has to be a sense in which we need to simultaneously shape the experience with the tool sets we're using so newcomers aren't overwhelmed, but still give people the capacity to develop their skill sets. Well, I didn't think that the orientation part of this course was bad. Uh, it would have been a lot better if we'd had, you know, a good synchronous conferencing setup at the start. We thought we did. Uh, it was nicely integrated with Grasshopper, and if it hadn't have crashed, it would have been fine. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, you know, I guess that they they keep coming back and saying, really, it won't crash next time. Uh, but you know, <laughs> uh, we can only take so many disasters. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And and the problem is that happened more than once with different. Solutions. Well, it happened roughly every week. Yeah. So you know that does. You know. That happens. On the other hand, uh, just today, in fact, uh, we went over 2,000 people registered. Yeah, I saw that. And I was, and as I was looking, you know, reading through the daily, and I try and make a habit of, uh, you know, as I read through the daily, of trying to comment on at least one or two blogs just to make mm -hmm. sure that, because there are some really good blog posts coming out and some great ideas. 
Uh, and so you know, the problem is they're, they're not always being recognized. And I think uh, to a degree, it's that um, you know, we, we haven't quite managed to create the system to quite accurately highlight where the activity is. And also, again, going back to the skill mm -hmm. sets, that people maybe aren't familiar or comfortable with this kind of fragmented interaction process. And, and it is hard. I mean, it's hard for me. And, and also, as somebody commented, uh, you know, everyone's doing this in their spare time. Everyone. Yeah. You are, I am, our guests are, and our court participants are. And it's really hard to do something like this in your spare time. Uh, particularly with what we're doing in this course with, you know, a new guest every week. Um, yeah. You know, it, that's really hard to do. On the other hand, you know, as I, I commented in one of the uh, newsletters a little while back, it gets us, gives us a chance to reboot each week. So that's kind of cool too. Yeah, and it's interesting though watching the daily. I mean, because this is this stuff is kind of a trailing thing. I mean, we're now getting. I'm still getting blog posts yeah, from yeah. Martin's week, and yeah. uh, you know, I think I saw about four or five this week related to Allison's week. So, and yeah. then I think Jeffrey Kiefer actually ended up stating on his site, "Is you know, this course just moves too fast, and maybe we should have planned two weeks per participant, but then suddenly it's a two-year yeah. course." Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, and it probably still should be two years, even with one week per participant. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people we left out that we really should have been able to, to add to the course. So, um, but I, I think there, there's also another aspect and, and a way in which the criticisms are sort of valid, and that is there should be better tools. And that's, you know, that's part of the thing that I've been trying to work on. Uh, that is my research project, if you will, is, is trying to make these tools for a, a, a just simple example. Um, was Tim was talking about, well, why don't we have people call into a call-in line, record their voices, and then play them back? Great idea, uh, except it's too centralized. So what I've been, one of the things that I did with Grasshopper over the summer, and I haven't rolled this out yet in the course, is to analyze all of the blog posts to pull out any MP3 audio recording, or any audio recording, doesn't have to be MP3, yeah. and put that into a separate media list so that, you know, on any given day, we can have all of these audio recordings and play them. And... The part I don't have yet is the part that takes that and outputs it as a playlist or something like that. Yeah. But the, the idea here is to encourage people to contribute not just as blog posts, but you know, to, to record audio or videos. And that way their live audio or video contribution can be captured by Grasshopper and then played back in something like this or just played back on the radio. Yeah. on Ed Radio. Uh, so that sort of centralizing thing. Or as well, like Grasshopper right now is building a graph out of all the posts and all the people. And I have no idea what that graph looks like. All I know is Grasshopper is doing it, but I have no yeah. visualization tools for it. None whatsoever. <laughs> Well, and when you think of it, I mean, this is now the third year that you and I and, and others have been involved in different courses, and each experience yeah. is very different, and we've tried to push boundaries. And, and yep. one of the things that I'm finding most encouraging now, it, it, early on with the first probably four courses or three courses that we ran, um, we weren't able to get the – because there weren't a lot of other people doing a lot of different stuff. And now you've yeah. got I mean, DS106, and you've got all these people, we, you know, the ed, EduMOOC that just ran, and then we've got the, the Stanford AI course coming up. Um, now we're starting to see activity that you can look at and say, oh, I like what those guys are doing. We should yeah. do that. Um, so now you're starting to get this ecosystem of innovation developing where it's not just a small, you know – a few people, you know, doing it without any real peripheral uh, feedback. So I think mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm quite excited to see that we're getting more ideas coming from these spaces. Yeah, um, I, I just want to read it. Not sure, sure if you caught this post in the uh, discussion area. Jen just posted and said, "Hey guys, this is my second MOOC, and the learning curve hasn't been that bad. The sync sessions have added significantly to my perspective and understanding. Um, I think I get MOOC now. It's a wonderful, chatty community of self-directed learning. Keep plowing through your plan. It's coming together very well." Um, oh, well. okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great point. And, but the problem I have is 
when we plow through the plan, we get the people <laughs> who are committed, like like you know, Jen is perhaps, yeah. but we lose the people who dip in and say, "Wow, this was painful. <laughs> I'm out of here." Well, that's why the weekly reboot with a new person each week is is so good because if somebody find you know if somebody sort of gets overwhelmed one week, fine, start over next week. Yeah. But uh, but you know but still, can we make that easier for people? Uh, I don't know. Uh, but the thing is, here's the thing: we have 36 weeks. And there will be more experiments in this course. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll up that audio thing at some point. Once I'm back from traveling, now I'm going to be traveling to mid-November. But once I'm back from traveling, I'm going to roll up that audio thing. Uh, I want to recruit Tony Hurst to help us with the graph. Uh, so, Tony, if you're out there listening, uh, you will be getting a request because I've got this ridiculously huge graph that's been created and I don't know what to do with it. And I'm sure that, you know, some sort of visual representation of all the interactions in this course, which I'm logging, uh, will be useful to provide people a focus to, to follow where you know, the maybe, interesting discussion is. Just a quick point. I mean, you might want to throw that out to the MOOC research group because I know uh, Eric Duvall, and he's got a few grad students in his university and, uh, mm -hmm. and this, a research associate. They're doing some pretty neat stuff there. So he's another person you might want to uh, possibly follow up with uh, or even just throw it out to the research group and say, look, I've got this thing. I don't quite know how to make sense of it. I think somebody like Eric yeah. or Anthony would be, would be great people to yeah. make sense of it. Yeah. And certainly, okay. certainly I'll, 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 you know, advise people. One other thing uh, we want to take note of is the, uh, the, the project that we have to compile all of this stuff together. Remember that? Uh, you know the the contribution, so that's kind of we're we're falling behind on that a bit. A lot. Actually, Dave Dave has been doing a good job. He's got a wiki where he's been community editing responses each week. Oh, good. Okay, and, I haven't uh, seen that. Okay, and that that's actually been uh, from what I've seen. The last time I dipped in there is actually looking really good. So I think ah. between between that and the weekly archives that we have as the week conclude, uh, I thought we were actually doing pretty good, or we were moving on track. We need to do a lot of editing okay. and cleaning. Right. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Well, good. Then I'll, I'll stop complaining about his uh, participation. No, no, stop. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. I'll never yeah. stop complaining. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, let's, let me just check now in the uh, chat area. Are there things that uh, are loading up here? Uh, Brainy Smurf Downs. I like the restart fresh each week. Um, uh, Jap is saying, and quite right, the trick is to discover ways to connect blogs, connect to blogs and people. And this ties in directly with that other conversation, right? The other conversation is the, uh, oh, I was talking with Eric Raymond or Bill Gates and, 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 right? And the reason why it happens is because uh, there's no other way to connect to people except through personal connections. And that's where you get this emphasis of a focus on an in-group. But if there's some way of identifying interesting activity, whether or not it's in your own in-group, you know, some way of representing all activity rather than just the people you know, uh, there's a chance of, of leveling out this rich get richer phenomenon. That's, yeah. that's my hope. That's what I want to happen. So that, you know, people who know Bill Gates don't have this magical advantage over everyone else. Uh, <laughs> well, yes. Seriously, because, you know, look, the Fred, who knows Bill Gates, isn't any smarter than I am. He just grew up next to Bill Gates. Well, big deal. Why should Fred own a multi-million dollar company and, and somebody else flip burgers at McDonald's? You know, I mean, it makes no sense. Now, in a similar regard, though, um, you know, you, you can't deny the fact that you're a substantial node in the ed tech space as well. Uh, you have, you, you know, you get a keynote invitations, you present, you're essentially positioned in a way that someone else who has a similar level of familiarity, perhaps, but they're not going to get the airtime and the voice time yeah. that you do. But ask anyone, knowing me confers no advantage to people. <laughs> 
<laughs> Seriously, I, I'm not going to get you a job. I can't help you get research proposals, you know. Um, and actually, because your point is well taken. Um, and this is why, for example, uh, I don't follow anyone on Twitter because I don't want to have some list of who's the in group of people that Stephen will listen to and who isn't. Uh, Google Plus, on the other hand, allows me to keep the list secret. So that's what I do. And oh. then, so I listen to everybody equally on Google Plus. And actually what I do is I listen to every, every voice that I possibly can on Google Plus. Yeah. Well, and that multiple voices and, uh, you know, I mean, there's certain, I think it's important that uh, people follow uh, conversations that drive them nuts. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you don't want this polarization of activity. Uh, at least be aware of what's going on in, in pe with people that you don't agree with. But yeah. anyway, I think we're, we're close to our time up, Stephen. Should we wrap it up here? Yeah, I think it's about that time. So, uh, again, a reminder, we will have a session on Sunday. And the time of that session is, <laughs> oh, I'm still trying to find it. Uh... <laughs> here, give me a quick second. Uh, I've, I've got it here somewhere because I just sent an email to Tony on this, so uh, it should be here. Um, now, he was looking at, uh, I can't remember, was it Mountain Time? Yeah, that's just it. It's... Um... Dang, I've got the time when you were leaving for the UK. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Uh, or wait, no. Yeah, Sunday, October 16th, 1 p.m. Alberta time. So that's... That's 3 p.m. Eastern time. Right, 3 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Atlantic, and 8 p.m. in London, the UK. Yes, so, or put another way, it's two hours from now wherever you are on some other day yeah <laughs> unless you're listening to a recording in which case just ignore that in which case ignore that yeah yeah uh, so he's sending me slides um so there will be slides he's gonna he will have a presentation to make uh, but we'll also have a chance to have a conversation and uh i've had the, you know the chance to talk with Tony on a few occasions and uh, he's an interesting and engaging person and knows more than all of us combined about uh, educational technology, especially in Canada, but, but also around the world. So. Yeah, he's, he's brilliantly informed. Uh, he's mm -hmm. a person that uh, I've had the chance. He just actually did a review of our master's program uh, here at Alberta last year, I believe it was. And, uh, you know, you get, you're, you're absolutely right. When you get a chance to chat with him, his, uh, his scope of understanding of what's going on in educational technology mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, he sits at that intersection. I mean, he's a, sort of an elder statesman of the field because he's, yeah. he's done stuff that, that uh, you know, right for, at UBC, critical activity that he did there. His publications are pronounced. So he's one of those very rare people that has elder statesman status, but still has all the momentum of a blogger slash Twitter that's still trying to figure yeah. out the new trends today. So he has that brilliant perspective of what's worked in the past and being very cutting edge in what's happening today. Yeah, yeah, his, his blog is required reading. Yeah. Well, Tim, uh, sorry we uh, kept you in the corner there, uh, but thanks for hosting this session, and right. I guess we need to follow up whether this is something that you feel we want to do next week or not, but we can do that by email. So thanks sure. again, Tim, and Stephen, good to chat. Yeah, good chatting with you, George. And to everyone, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday. And uh, just before we go, I, Tim, I'm going to want to try to get numbers for our statistics on yeah we can we can keep the discussion going after the recording for sure all right then all right. thanks a lot all right bye y'all thanks all